Hello. Welcome to my virtual classroom. Here we're all sitting around. Um, here's me. Here's my big smile to be with you once again. Okay. Here's my cup of tea. Hope you've got something useful to drink, preferably water, while you're talking, while you're listening to me. Okay. We're going to be looking at PY3. We've been looking at a research methods question. The one I'm going to look at is from June 2010, and it's question one. The, uh, the approach I'm going to take is to tell you about how to answer the question uh, rather than give you a, a model answer. So we'll think about technique, technical things, techniques that you can use when you're in the exam. And there are some ways in which this is very similar to PY2, but there are a couple of important differences. So I'll talk you through, I'll show you what the uh, similarities and differences are and give you a couple of tips on how I would do this uh, question if I was in your situation in the exam. So, here's the question and uh, let's have a look here. So, as in the, uh, as in the other, uh, as in PY2, it does say read the material carefully, spend, it, spend a good, good little while, five minutes at least, trying to grasp all the information. There's not a massive amount in there, but there's always more than you think. Um, and you've got some results that you have to um, try and interpret afterwards, okay? Now, the big difference between this and uh, PY2 is that some of the questions can be answered without any reference to the scenario whatsoever. So the first, uh, what we have here is a, an observation in a zoo watching primates uh, looking for differences between female and male behavior as far as aggression goes. Okay, so uh, that's what's actually happening. They're watching primates and they're wait, uh, trying to see which who is more aggressive, males or females. Um, now, in this uh, this observation, uh, the first question about the observation or uh, the research is the method used was an observation. Define the term observation. You don't have to refer at all to the scenario here. That's why I've put a little black star against it. These ones with black stars. Are ones where you don't need to refer to the scenario whatsoever. Okay, so you might talk about an observation is takes place where someone, where the researcher, is uh, looking at participants um, and looking at them produce the behaviour that they're interested in studying in. And you might want to talk about uh, controlled observations where that takes place in an artificial situation, and naturalistic observation where that takes place in the participant's own environment. Okay. Define what is meant by the term confounding variable, part C1. Okay, what's confounding variable? We know that confounding variable is any variable other than the IV in an experiment that has an, an effect on the dependent variable. You might want to give an example for that for your two marks, but you don't have to refer to the scenario. The next bit, you do have to refer to the scenario as you do with part B, so I'm missing that out for now. What do we mean by the term validity? We can talk about generalizability and ecological validity. We can talk about internal validity. There's a whole range of things that we can talk about for the validity question. Okay, now, that's the first half of the paper. And you've on that first half of the paper, you've got six marks that you can answer without having to refer to the scenario at all. Here's the second half. Look at this. Part E and F. They also refer to the scenario, so that's a bit tricky. But look at G and A to find the term mode. Most common score in a data set. Give an example. Job done. No reference to scenario. Same with the median. Um, got two marks, so you need to, to explain exactly how you calculate the median. Putting all the scores in a data set in order, and then selecting the, the central one if there is an odd number of scores finding the mean of the two central ones if there's an even number of scores. An advantage of the median as a measure of central tendency, well if there's an extreme value that doesn't affect the median in the same way that it would affect the the mean if you were calculating a mean. A disadvantage of the median is that the median doesn't take into account all the, the uh, data in the data set, it's really only focused around the, the middle. Um, but again look, eight marks there with absolutely no reference to the scenario. Okay, back to the first page and let's have a look at the other two questions, see what else we can do. 
So, what is meant by aggression was operationalized? It says here that they created a schedule of aggressive behavior. So they'd have a checklist of aggressive behaviors to help them decide how are they going to measure aggressive behavior. So they might have a, a, a box for uh, punching and another box for slapping and another box for biting. Okay, so operationalizing a variable is deciding how you're going to measure it. And in this case, it's which ones you're going to put on your uh, observation schedule. OK, how might a confounding variable have affected this study? OK, now they're looking for differences between males and females. But what if there was something different happening in the males uh, section when people were observing males? So what if there was a naughty boy throwing, uh, throwing things at the males while the observer was observing? Maybe that could, could be responsible for the difference between the male and female behavior. See what I've done, though? I have actually referred to and spoken about what was happening in the scenario. So we talked about a boy at the zoo chucking stuff at the uh, at the male uh, primates, for example. OK, looking at uh, the second half of the paper, uh, what have we got here? One thing that we might want to do is we're thinking about, if we're looking for the truthfulness of these results. We might want to think, hold on a second. Does the behavior shown by these primates in the zoo, does that reflect, can that be generalized to behavior of primates in the wild? So we might, for example, do that by comparing the findings of our research in, in the zoo to the findings of other research that has taken place in the wild. Ethical issues. Two main ethical issues here, and, we, and remember these are different ethical issues from the ones that we would have with uh, humans in terms of informed consent or whatever. Okay, I think the first one that we talk about here would be actually maybe there could be some kind of uh, harm issue to the animal here if uh, they're experiencing a lot of anxiety because of the observers, the presence of the observers. Okay, so you might want to say, oh, to minimise that, it would be a good idea if the observers weren't weren't uh, seen by the primates. Uh, another one is a more general issue and that is really if we're interested in human aggression uh, will the findings from these uh, from from this observation will actually justify the possible suffering that the animals might have endured. Okay so again we're talking these are different ethical issues from the ethical issues that we describe when we are um, talking about human participants okay so what have we done we've had a had a quick run through each part of this key thing I want you to think about is look at all these bits that I could do 14 marks out of 25 in this case without referring to the scenario so the more general stuff that you know that's fine what makes you but what will get you the top marks is not only knowing this stuff but then being able to apply it to the novel situation of the scenario okay what you need to do now is go away and have a try of this paper and um, then you can mark it against the mark scheme which should be on the which will also be on the blog okay go and have fun bye